WDBS, the Waterford Drama Broadcasting System, would like to welcome all of you at home to Personal Call, a radio play by Dame Agatha Christie. Tonight's play is produced and directed by Sir Shane Michael Valley and is brought to you by COVID-19, a worldwide pandemic for all. Social distancing for when you need to be six feet apart. Local 2020, PPE and mask makers of Great Britain. And Purell for hand use and not consumption. And now, ladies and gentlemen, grab a cup of tea, sit back and enjoy Personal Call by Agatha Christie. Our play opens at the home of James and Pam Brent, Bristol, England, 1955. Well, there's a bit of good news on this rainy evening. My sister is expecting a baby. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, Joy, congratulate her for me. Thank you, thank you. I'll tell her you wish her well. Would you excuse me for a moment? I think I see Pam. Certainly, darling. Of course. Look, there's James. He's so charming. We must say hello. Hello, Pam. You're looking wonderful. Marriage seems to agree with you. Darling, it's lovely to see you. Come along and have a drink. Oh, George, you're looking more prosperous than ever. Just a facade, Pam. Business is on the rocks. But you look fine. Don't take any notice of him, Pam. He always says business is on the rocks. But he still managed to buy me this new frock. I didn't have any alternative. The first thing I saw was the bill. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's lovely anyhow. If it wasn't for James, I should be quite jealous of you, darling. And now then, what are you going to drink? There's a perfectly diabolical cocktail. Hello. Or would you rather have Hello. a sherry? Yes. Oh, Kensington cocktail, 34598. I'm going to myself right under the what? table and George Just will have a to moment, carry me please. Home. I can't it won't hear be the first you. time either. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yes? Can Mr. James Brent no, take a personal call, anywhere? please, from Newton Abbott? Here, I'll try to get a hold of him, but there's a party going on. Here's your drink, Mary. Oh, thank you, James. You really are the perfect host. Philip, I'm afraid you'll have to wait a bit for Pam. She's just met an old school friend. Oh, I know all about old school friends. I'll just gaze at her in rapture from afar. What's this I hear about the two of you going away? That's right. We're going in three days' time. Please, sir, please. going to manage on this travel allowance. Sir, please. Uh, What? You want it on the phone, sir. What now? Who is it? It's a personal call, sir. From something Abbott. People ring at the most inconvenient moments. John, get me another drink. Hello, Lois. Lovely to see you. Pam's about somewhere. Hello? Is that Mr. James Brent speaking personally? James Brent speaking. Just a moment, please. Go ahead, please. Mr. Brent is waiting. Hello? James? Who's speaking? Don't you know? (laughs) It's Faye. Who did you say? Sorry, the line's bad and there's lots of noise going on here. It's Faye. What did you say? It's Faye, James. Don't you remember? Who are you? Where are you speaking from? I'm at Newton Abbott Station, where you left me. What's that? Who is this? I told you. I'm Faye. You remember? Faye? I'm waiting for you to come and meet me. Meet you? What do you mean? I'm waiting at the station at New Nabbit. Look here, one of us is mad. What are you talking about, and who are you? How often have I got to tell you that I'm Faye? If this is a practical joke, let me tell you that it's a very heartless and silly one. Oh, it isn't a joke, James. I'm here waiting. You'll have to come. Look, this is absurd. How dare you pretend... So that's where you are, darling, telephoning. For goodness sake, come here. back. People are pouring Just in. Look at the we want some more cocktails mixed. <laughs> My darling, what is it? A good. cruel, silly, What's practical that? joke. Sorry. You think people you had something better to do. Boy. Darling, what is it? Who was it ringing up? How should I know? But I'm going to try and find out. Can you possibly carry on for a few minutes without me, Pam? I'll be along as soon as I can, my sweet. Yes, of course. You're really upset, aren't you, darling? What did whoever it was say? Operator, can I help you? Oh, operator, yes. My name's Brent. Kensington 34598. You put through a personal call to me just now. Can you tell me where it came from? Yes? Yes? You'll ring me back? 
as soon as you can. Sorry, Pam, but it really made me see red. But who was it? I'll tell you all about it later. Do go now, darling. The party will be getting out of hand. It's being a great success. That's really the trouble. All right, darling. I'll cope. But do come soon. Yes, I will. Mary, Evan, how nice of you to come. Hello, Pam. You're looking more wonderful than ever. Darling, I haven't seen you for ages. Can't we get into a corner somewhere? I want to hear all about you and James. Faye. I wasn't dreaming it. She said Faye. And it was her voice, too. Who the devil can have been playing a trick on me? Hello? Mr. James Brent? Yes? I have made inquiries. No personal call has been put through to you. But I don't understand. I don't understand. I heard her. (laughs) (laughs) Delightful story, Maureen. How are the children? Really, James, if you finish telephoning, you might come along. You just stand there looking as though someone had socked you on the head. I really am sorry, Pam. I'm with you. Who was it who rang you up? Oh, just somebody trying to be funny. What did he say? Or was it a she? I don't know. I mean, it was a she. It it was nothing particular. Darling, you're not leading a double life, I hope. I shouldn't like that at all. You're the only woman in my life, Pam. I can assure you of that. (laughs) You'd have to say so anyway. But something seems to have shattered your morale. I just don't like silly jokes. Well, come on. Back to the scrimmage. Oh, by the way, I asked Evan and Mary in for bridge tomorrow. I haven't seen Mary for ages and one can't talk at a show like this. Is that all right? Yes, dear. Quite all right. Have you tried the hors d'oeuvres yet? They're positively exquisite. Quite. What can I interest you in? Do you have any more of those deviled eggs? Yes, and I'd be happy to get you some. Would you care for another drink as well? Oh, splendid. Gin and tonic for me. I'll have a sherry, thank you. Right away, loves. Carolyn, quick. We need to whip another batch of deviled eggs. We're almost out and they keep asking for more. But what of paprika, Mum? Find something else to use. We don't have time to wait around. But what do I use in place of paprika? Figure it out. I've got a glass of gin to fill. Hello, James. There you are. You're a very elusive host. Hello, Evan. Not seen you for ages. I hear you're coming into bridge tomorrow. Good show. That's right, old boy. We're going to take all your money off you right before you go on your holiday. Come on, you. Let's have another drink. Who's playing tricks on James Brent? Stay tuned to the WDBS production of Personal Call. News, Daily Herald, Observer, two shillings. Get your news. Observer, please. Oh, and a package of spearmint gum. Four shillings, my dear. Thank you much and safe travels to you, ma'am. Thank you, you're too kind. I shall miss you, darling. Please don't go, Kate. I can't stand the thought of you being away for a week or more. But, Tony, I need to be there for my mother. She needs my help. But, my love, surely your sisters could pitch in. She's there, mum, too. Oh, you know my sisters. One is less kind than the next. Now, where's the track? Next one down. Mind them cases, Joe. Porter. Yes, Mum, what is it? Please, can you tell me where I can find the telephones? Sorry, Mum, couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, the telephones. Out by the booking office, over the bridge. Um, it's a trunk call I want. The first box. Thank you. Hello, Bertha. Seen a ghost? It is funny you saying that. That woman was asking me way to the telephone boxes. Reckon as I've seen her before somewhere. And seems to me as when I saw her, it was something to do with her death. I just can't call to mind. All stations to Plymouth stopping. Noon Abbott, Noon Abbott from Plymouth. Stopping train to Plymouth. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sponsors. Every year, Waterford Drama is fortunate to give out scholarships to their graduating seniors. This year, however, with the absence of in-person shows, there have been no basket raffles, poster auctions, or tip glasses. So, they need your help. If you like what you hear this evening, we strongly encourage you to make a donation to the scholarship fund by sending cash or a check made out to WHSSAF to Shane Valley's attention at Waterford High School. The students need your help, and every bit matters. And now, back to the show. And I've got the best heart and a trump. That makes us two down. Sorry, James. You'll do, Mary. Cut, please. Jumping into four spades was a bit rash, Pam. I've had an awful head today. After the party yesterday, I suppose. Oh, jolly good party, Pam. Oh, yes, indeed. Evan and I drank far too much. Oh, one must do something to cheer oneself up nowadays. Oh, very true. Oh, I quite agree. Here, here. That's a reason Pam and I are going on holiday. Oh, I'm ever so jealous. Perhaps Evan will take me on holiday one day soon. All in due time, my love. Better get on that, old man. One heart. Three diamonds. No bid. Four clubs. Who oh, bother? Mrs. Lamb will answer it. What did you say? Four clubs. Ah, double four clubs. Four diamonds. Double four diamonds. No bid. No bid. Yes, Mrs. Lamb, what is it? It's a personal call, sir. For you. For me? All right. I'll come. Darling, you don't think it's the same? It's quite all right. Uh, probably Smith, about that transfer. Wonder whether it's still raining. You know, Mary, he got a personal call yesterday from somewhere or other, and it upset him dreadfully. He told me it was someone playing a silly joke on him, but he wouldn't tell me what the joke was. You know, Mary, it really quite worried me. Have you got an extension? Yes, in my bedroom. Do you think I would... <clears throat> I must just run upstairs and powder my nose. You women. Who's telephoning James? What will the ever-curious Pam overhear? Who will win at bridge? Our story continues. Hello? Yes? Just a moment, please. Go ahead, you're through. James, it's me again. Faye? Yes, Faye. Now look here. What's the meaning of all this? What kind of a game is it? It's not a game, James. If you think you're going to get me rattled, you're not. You needn't be so upset. I just want you to come and meet me. Meet you? Where? At Newton Abbott, of course. That's where I am now. A likely story. I checked up last night. May interest you to know that no call from Newton Abbott had ever been put through. But I am at Newton Abbott. Wait, I'll push the door a little bit open and then you can hear. Newton Abbott, Newton Abbott, Exeter and Paddington only. This train for Exeter and Paddington only. You hear? I... I don't believe it. Haven't you even noticed what time it is? What do you mean? The time. It's a quarter past seven. Don't you remember? <laughs> Shut up. How rough you are, James, darling. But you do see what I mean, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. What the hell do you want anyway? I want you to come and meet me here. Where? Oh dear, have I got to open the door again? I told you before. I'm where you left me. And I can't leave there until you come. This has got to stop, I tell you. It's got to stop. Hello? 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 Are you there? Damn! The mysterious Fay calls again. What's the significance of a quarter past seven? You shall find out soon enough. But now, a word from our sponsors. Shop Azalea for a carefully curated selection of gifts and goods for a lovely home. Owned by Waterford drama alumna Lexi Percy, 
you'll find handmade and small batch items perfect for yourself or a unique gift for a loved one. Open 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Stop by and shop at our storefront located at 301 Main Street in Niantic, Connecticut. Connecticut. Uh, that, that's in the States, no? Now I still feel, Mary, that kids don't really appreciate... Hello, James. Put through a successful deal. What deal? Or was it a bit more personal than that, old man? Nothing important. Where's Pam? Powdering her nose. Oh, here you are, Pam. Where we got to? Uh, four diamonds doubled. Your shout, James. Oh, uh, no bit. Are you finding it difficult to keep your mind on the game, dear? No, of course not. What do you mean? What's the matter, Pam? Not feeling faint or anything, are you? You look very queer. It's just my head. I told you I had a bad head. <laughs> look here. Oh, I think we'd better stop. It's nearly half past seven and we've only just started this rubber. Pam's not feeling well, I can see. Uh, come on, Evan. Evan? Ow! All right, don't kick me. So long, you people. See you again after you come back from abroad. When are you off? The day after tomorrow. I am looking forward to it, I can tell you. Now we're like La Belle France for a holiday. Aha, uh-huh, but you shouldn't take the wife. <laughs> Don't you believe it? It's going to be our second honeymoon. Come on, Evan. I'll see you out. So long, old man. So long. Bye. Second honeymoon. Bye, enjoy yourselves. Sorry about the head, Pam. Too much gin yesterday evening. Too much gin covers everything, doesn't it? Hello? Is something the matter? Pam, darling, what have I done to make you look at me like that? Nothing. Nonsense. I can see there's something. Have I said something tactless? I'll mix you a small brandy and soda. James, who is Faye? Damn! What do you mean, Faye? What do you know about Faye? I know that she's a woman who rings you up on a personal call, and that she wants you to come and meet her somewhere, and that she seems to know you rather well. So you were listening in just now? Yes. My dear girl, you've got the whole thing wrong. You simply don't understand. You're only too right, I don't. It isn't the least what you think. Isn't it? No, dear. Of course it isn't. As a matter of fact, well... Faye's the name of my first wife. You told me her name was Florence. So it was. But I always called her Faye. So your former wife, who has been dead for over a year... Rings you up on the telephone. (laughs) Most remarkable. Don't you see, darling? It's some wicked, stupid, practical joke. Ringing me up and pretending to be a dead woman. And it happened yesterday, too? And that's why you're so upset? Naturally. It's a particularly cruel and heartless thing to do. But, But how extraordinary. Why should anyone do such a thing? Plenty of batty people in the world, I suppose. But, James, her voice. Did you recognize her voice? You did, didn't you? That's why you were scared as well as angry. It was Faye's voice. It sounded like it, but Where was of it? course... She wanted you to meet her at some railway station or other? Newton Abbott. But why Newton Abbott? And what has the time quarter past seven got to do with it? Because... I never cared to talk about it much. Too painful. She was killed in an accident there, you see. At a quarter past seven? Well, uh, yes. Oh, you might as well hear all about it. She'd been getting dizzy spells, you see. We were going back to London after a holiday we'd had on Dartmoor. We were standing on the platform, waiting for the train. I went to get a paper from the bookstore. She must have felt faint and... and pitched forward onto the line just as the express came in. Oh, darling, how tragic for you. Yes, You can see why I never cared to talk about it. Yes, yes, of course. James, yesterday you were ringing up to find out where that personal call came from. What did they say? They said no personal call had been put through to me. What if... what if it's true? What? I've just been reading a book on psychical research and really the most extraordinary things happen. Suppose it really is Faye. Suppose the spirit is there at that railway station, waiting for you. 
Do you think I believe that sort of silly nonsense? Nobody would play that sort of a joke. Nobody would. And you recognized her voice, darling. Queer things do happen. People who die of violent deaths are earthbound. They say... Who said she died of violent death? But she fell under the train, didn't she? Yes. Yes, of course. For heaven's sake, don't go on talking about it. To forget, that's all I want. To forget. Let's talk about ourselves. Let's think how lovely it will be to get to the south of France. The mimosa will be in bloom and the Mediterranean will be oh so blue. Why, when we get off the train... Why don't we go by air? Much more fun. No, I hate air travel. Well, trains are so stuffy and take so much longer. No, we're going by train. I've got the tickets and everything. That's all settled, dear. Trains? James, let's go down to this place. Uh, what is it? Noon Abbott. Tomorrow. Before we go away, let's be there. In the station. At a quarter past seven. Of all the idiotic suggestions. We'll do nothing of the sort. A lot of silly, superstitious rubbish. It's nothing but a hoax, I tell you. And anyway, we've got other things to do tomorrow. All sorts of things. We've got an appointment with the lawyers, our two wills to sign... I leave you everything I've got, and you leave me everything you've got. But I get the best of the bargain. You're really quite a rich man, aren't you, darling? Yes. It's annoying that my capital is tied up the way it is, but the money's there, all right. (laughs) You may be a rich widow one of these days. Darling, don't. Dearest, I I was only joking. But you're right. One shouldn't joke about the things that really matter. You and I are going to have long years of happiness together. Long years of happiness. I'll try and make up to you for for all that you must have suffered. That's my sweet girl. Is Faye's spirit at Newton Abbott's station? Will James and Pam enjoy a wonderful holiday in France? All will be told after a word from our sponsors. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, and, of course... Charity events. Philomena's has, is, and always will be there for the community. Celebrate and support Southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's Utopia Plaza in Waterford. I- is this is this the States as well, or are they are they talking about Waterford Island? Milk, letters, papers, bread, laundry. I think that's everything, Mrs. Lamb. Don't you worry, ma'am. I'll look after things for you while you're away. Thank you, Mrs. Lamb. I'm sure you will. Well, it's after seven. You'd better be getting home. Wouldn't you like me to stay until Mr. Brent comes back? No, I shall be all right. I don't expect he'll be long. You go off home. I'll be here first thing in the morning. And I'll bring along that packet of luggage labels you asked me to. (coughs) Shall I answer it, ma'am? No, I will. Good night, Mrs. Lamb. Good night, ma'am. Hello? This is Mr. Enderby of Enderby Blinkenshop in Lucas. Can I speak to Mrs. James Brent, please? Mrs. Brent speaking. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Brent. Feeling better, I trust? Better? I'm quite all right. Capital, capital. I rang up to acknowledge the receipt of your will, duly signed and witnessed. Your husband brought it in this afternoon. It is quite in order. Well? I am not quite clear, however, what you wish done with it. Shall it remain in our keeping, or would you like it sent to your bank? I understand that you and your husband are going abroad tomorrow. Yes, we are. Perhaps you had better send it to the bank. They have all my share certificates and things like that. Are you aware of the address? Yes, yes. I have the address from your husband. Then, that is all quite in order. Allow me to wish you a very pleasant trip, and no more of these dizzy fits. Dizzy fits? What, what do you mean? Your husband seemed quite worried about you. But I trust they are not serious. You were very wise to rest quietly at home today and not come into my office. But James said that it was you. Hello? Hello? Nothing. Ah, I feared we had been cut off. As I was saying. Now, what was I saying? 
You were saying that James was worried about my health, and it's all nonsense. I am perfectly well. Ah, these devoted husbands. Overanxious, always overanxious. But it's a fault on the right side. Perhaps. Well, thank you, Mr. Enderby, for bringing me up. Not at all, not at all. Bon voyage. Goodbye. Dizzy fits. Dizzy fits. I've never had anything of the kind. It's just on a quarter past seven. I wonder. Hello? Yes? Can Mr. James Brent take a personal call from Newton Abbott? Oh, I... he's out. Can you say when he'll be available? I... I don't quite know. This... this is Mrs. James Brent speaking. Perhaps I would do instead? Just a moment, please. So far away. It's very difficult. Can you hear me? This is Pamela Brent. Who are you? I'm Faye Mortimer. I know who you are. Don't travel by train with him. What? I couldn't quite hear you. Don't travel. By train. Hello? 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 Pam? What are you doing? Good lord, you look white as a sheet. James, what was your first wife's name? I told you, Faye. No, I mean her maiden name. Garland, why? It wasn't Mortimer. Where did you get hold of that name? Who's been telling you things? Come on now, tell me at once. Ouch, you're hurting me! Tell me where you got hold of that name! She said it through the telephone! You mean... It's happened again? Yes. She said her name was Faye Mortimer. Oh my god. I must have a drink. That's better. You'd better have one too, Pam. I don't need one. I'm sorry I lost my temper, but this sort of thing, it gets a man down. Thank goodness we're going away tomorrow. Right out of England. I'm not going. What's that? I'm not going. But why not? What's happened? I'm not going abroad. I'm going down to Newton Abbott. You'll do nothing of the kind. You can't stop me, and if you won't come too, I shall go alone. You've got to find out what all this means. It's a stupid, cruel, practical joke. Don't say that again. It isn't true. Whatever it is, it isn't a joke. I think... I think it's her. Her? Faye, you're back or never gone away. Just waiting there where she died. Waiting for you to come. Stop it, Pam. Do you want to drive me mad? You think so, too. Oh, yes, you do. You've got to go there and find out. If you won't come with me, then I shall go by myself. Of course I should go if you're going, but I don't like it. I think you're making a great deal of unnecessary fuss about the whole thing. Is Pam, in fact, making a fuss? What will they find at Newton Abbott? Stay tuned as Personal Call continues. But first, another word from our sponsors. Serving the freshest and tastiest pizza and grinders, not to mention laughs and smiles, to Waterford and all of New London County. Come visit Supreme Pizza in Waterford. After all, they're the home of the big one, the Tuna Grinder. Family owned and operated since 1979, Supreme Pizza is a proud supporter of the Waterford community. What on earth is a grinder? Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where the Birmingham track is? Over the bridge, track six. You've only got five minutes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I must get moving. Come along, dear. We must hurry or we'll miss our train. I'm moving as fast as I can, mummy. This bag is heavy. I told you that you packed far too much. Oh, let it be. Stop and train to Plymouth on the other side, up the stairs. Paddington? This platform, 7.15, due in a few minutes. Is there a restaurant car? Yes, up forwards. Talkie? 7.55, number two, over the bridge. The next train on number two platform is at Exeter and Paddington only. Exeter and Paddington only. Well, Pam, 
I hope you're satisfied. This is Newton Abbott Station. Cine ghosts about. Don't take up that sceptical attitude. We've got to be helpful. Helpful? To whom? To Faye, of course. How can you believe this... this far ago of superstitious nonsense? I don't believe exactly. I've just got an open mind. And don't you see? If nothing happens, we'll be free of it. You'll be free of it. The train standing on platform number three is the stopping train for Plymouth. All stations to Plymouth. It's nearly time now. Now you're both just standing here? I wasn't. I'd gone to the bookstall to get a paper. Yes, I know, but you left Faye here. Yes. She was quite all right when I left her. But she'd been having these dizzy spells. James, why did you tell Mr. Enderby that I'd been having dizzy spells? I never... What on earth do you mean? Why didn't we both go to his office as we arranged? Because I thought you had quite enough to do. Why shouldn't he send a clerk along with the papers? But the excuse you gave him was that I had fits of dizziness? Nonsense! Of course I didn't. I can't imagine where he got hold of that idea. Well, according to him, he got it from you. What do you mean, according to him? You never saw the old boy. He rang me up last night. Damn! What did you say? Nothing. It would be easy to fall over on the line here if one did feel dizzy. Or if someone pushed you. Exeter and Paddington train just coming in. So you did come, James. Faye? Yes, it's Faye. I've been waiting here for you. Ever since you pushed me under the train that day. I never meant to. It was an accident. Just an accident. I didn't mean to push you. Keep away from me. Keep away! Look out, sir! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion of Agatha Christie's personal call. She's all right. Coming around now. Take it easy. There, like that. Where am I? You're in the station master's office, Mrs. Brent. I'm Inspector Nericot. Now, just you drink this. There, that's right. James? Is he... Was he... He was... Killed instantly. This has been a great shock to you, I know, Mrs. Brent. But, in a way, you've been lucky. You were going away with him on a journey abroad, so I've heard. And maybe you wouldn't have come back. Not come back? There have been three accidents that we know of. One in Northumberland, and one in Wales, and one here last year. In each case, the husband had mentioned previously to someone that his wife was subject to fainting or dizzy spells. And in each case, when the accident happened, the husband claimed he had gone to the bookstall to buy a paper. The names were different, but it was the same man. But there was no actual evidence, and so this lady here volunteered to help us. You! It was you who spoke to me on the platform! But you can't be Faye. You're cleverly made up, but... You're not young enough. Faye was my daughter. Our voices were exactly alike, and we looked sufficiently like each other for me to pass as her. James Mortimer had never met me. You trapped him. He murdered her. I always knew it, but I had to break him down. The first time I rang him up, I was in London, but I pretended it was a personal call from Newton Abbott. The second time, I really did speak from Newton Abbott. The third time I rang up, He was out. And you spoke to me instead? Spoke to you? No, I never spoke to you. But you did. You warned me. You're wrong. I just rang off. But someone spoke to me. Someone told me not to go on a journey with him. Someone with a voice just like yours. Someone. Who? Who? Tonight's play featured Mr. Jack Lang as James Brent Miss Madison Gates as Pam Brent 
Miss Amanda Rowe as Mary Curtis, Mr. John Morgan as Evan Curtis, Miss Emily Robillard as Mrs. Lamb, Miss Holly Gray as the operator, Miss Julie Morrison as the porter, Mr. Liam Ward as Inspector Nerecott, Miss Caitlin Brown as the station announcer, Mr. Justin Voiteviets as Mr. Enderby, and Miss Murphy Ryan as Faye. And that puts an end to our radio play. WDBS, the Waterford Drama Broadcasting System, would like to thank you for listening tonight, and we certainly hope you enjoyed the programme. The show's producer and cast would like to thank the following for making this play possible. Andre Hauser, Kim Cotson, Al Crosley, Rebecca Cameron, Jessica Cochran, a proper Brit, Elise Tuckwood, Matthew Cadaret, Timothy Fioravanti, Azalea Home and Gift, Philomena's Restaurant, Supreme Pizza, and a worldwide pandemic. And please don't forget, if you would like to donate to the Waterford Drama Scholarship Fund, you can send cash or a check made out to WHS SAF to Shane Valley's attention at Waterford High School. And never forget, this is just a brief intermission. Be safe, be well, and wear a mask. Good night.